Well, we talk a lot about sophisticated cyber attacks, ransomware campaigns, it's going to be SMS scams like these that are going to hit way more users, and you're much more likely to encounter them. You may encounter them personally, it may be your mom or dad, your grandmother, somebody in your family clicking on one of these, and you need to know how to deal with them and what the consequences could be if you accidentally do happen to click on one of these links. So we're going to do a deep dive today. This is Leo, and you are watching the PC Security Channel. This video is brought to you by Anti-Stalker. A mobile app that can allow you to track and block any kind of data collection on your phone, as well as scan for malicious apps. Please check them out using the QR code or the link. More at the end of this video. Let's start at the very beginning, shall we? You receive an SMS that looks something like this. It says, Simon attempted to deliver your parcel today, but no one answered reschedule and track here. Maybe you were expecting a parcel today or yesterday. It's not that uncommon these days for people to be getting something in the mail. As an internet veteran, you might say, I aren't click that because it's got a 38 in the URL. What kind of a link is that? But you have to understand, people are going to click on the link instinctively. And not all links will look exactly the same. Some of them may be more convincing than this. Somebody may have postoffice.depot, and even you could fall prey to something like that. And I always like to stress the point that a lot of these things do depend on the situation. So right now we're looking for a scam. So your brain is honed in looking at every little detail in the link, but that's not how you operate when you normally check your phone. You may have 20 notifications and one of them is this SMS. And if you were just expecting a parcel today, you just instinctively open the SMS, click the link without realizing what the link you clicked was. Once you click on the link, you're going to be redirected to a site like this. The background looks pretty legitimate. It's got the post office logo and there's a little pop-up that says missed a delivery. And it's gonna start by asking your postcode. Again, not particularly alarming. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in my actual real life postcode, of course. Now it briefly shows a map with location and then moves to this page which says find your parcel. Now it wants my full name, my delivery address and my email address. So again, I'm gonna fill this in very diligently And again, nothing particularly alarming about this request. In fact, this may be the exact same information you need to reschedule a parcel with the post office. I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. And already at this point, they have gathered a lot of data about you that they could potentially sell on the dark web. So the attackers are happy even if you don't go any further. But now it's asking for the date of birth and the mobile number. Once again, I'm gonna provide very accurate information here. As you can see, I fought in WW1 and WW2 and www.google.com. And now that these details are ready, we're going to click continue. And now it's asking for a re-delivery date. I'm going to select Saturday, click continue again, and boom. Now it's asking me for my credit card number. So finally, the attackers have gotten to the point, the thing they want. And this is the trick. By the time you reach this page, you've spent in so much time filling in the forms that look legitimate, and you just want to be over with it. And it does not seem like a very strange request to ask for a £1.20 delivery charge. So you're going to go ahead and type in your details here. And the moment you hit continue, they have your credit card number. Of course, that's the end of that. <laughs> Likely they're gonna end up purchasing gift cards or something else they can sell in some secondary market to launder the money so you can't get it back. So let's go ahead and generate a credit card number and see if we can get around that check. It actually worked. So now we're processing and it's finding our parcel and the redelivery request was successfully processed. It's gonna be delivered on Saturday to the moon. Great, looks like the post office has finally got its rockets in order. And now you can click exit and you're done. And now it actually sends you to the legitimate post office site. So after the process, if you had any doubts whatsoever, you can check that it is the legitimate link, everything's good, and you don't think about it twice. So let's say you actually did this. You went through with this process or someone in your family went through this process. What can you do? 
Well, the first and most important thing to do immediately would be to contact your bank and disable the card that you provided there. You might even want to freeze your account temporarily if you're not sure. And then, of course, you can request a new card from the bank. It's a very simple process, so don't take any chances. Just go ahead and do it immediately. Secondly, you want to make sure that any of the information that you provided is not a security question in any of your important online accounts, because now they have your name, they have your address, your birthday, and with that data, they could potentially hack some of your accounts. And they may not do it directly, but what's going to happen is that data is now going to be sold on the black market, in the dark web, and hackers are going to get it. They're going to add it to their brute force dictionaries, and they're going to be hitting different accounts to see if those credentials will open anything. Now, we're also going to look this up on Virus Total, And as you can see, we've got the link flagged here. It's got some IPs based in Switzerland, although this is likely just a gateway, no detections here. It does go to the network location. Searching specifically for the network URL, though, we can see that it is detected by 13 engines, which is not a lot, come to think of it. And that's because these links can be easily generated. So there's always a good chance that the day you get an SMS like this, the website may have been set up hours ago. It's not going to be detected by anyone. Don't click on any suspicious links. Of course, suspicious is a blanket term. What's suspicious to me may not look suspicious to someone else. Better advice, in my opinion, is to tell people never to directly provide sensitive information from a link that they got in their email or on their SMS. If you get an SMS like this and it's legitimate, just go to the official site yourself manually, type it into the browser and go to the right link. Don't use the link in the SMS. Hopefully this is going to help you avoid such scams and also maybe inform your family. Please like and share this video if you found this helpful. It massively helps out the channel and hey, we need to get this information out there. There's a lot of fun cybersecurity stuff on this channel as well, so don't forget to subscribe. This video is brought to you by AntiStalker, a mobile security app on Android that allows you to monitor access to your sensors, like your camera, your microphone, as well as scan for malicious apps, spyware, things like that. Now, my personal favorite feature is the ability to control the data or telemetry that's collected by apps on the phone. As you know, these days, every app is going to ask you for permissions. You might have used a hotel booking app, Facebook Messenger, but now it's continuously sending that data for advertising purposes. You can monitor that and block it using AntiStalker. I've spoken with the founders. It's a really exciting app and they're adding new features all the time. So show them some love for supporting the channel. Check them out using the link in description, the one on screen or scan the QR code. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching and as always, Stay informed, stay secure.